on the second last installment of Snatchween. In an otherwise crappy no-good year of 2020, the human race suddenly encountered a deadly snatch to its very existence, and a stunning enemy surfaced, as such enemies often do, in the seemingly most innocent and unlikely of places. Okay, today we're going to go somewhere that's green for Snatchween, and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to pay tribute to one of my all-time favourite movie musicals, Little Shop of Horrors, and I'm going to do a Audrey slash Audrey 2 inspired look tried to look for some reference pictures online, but no one's ever done this look before, so this is going to be something that's completely original. I've been doodling Audrey 2's all week, so hopefully I can get this right. So just join me while I talk about my favourite mu movie musical. So don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ring that bell for post notifications. Alright, let's get this on. Okay, let's get right into this. So block my brows. I did give myself face tips today because I want to pull the mouth up as much as possible. I did find some tutorials doing Venom, so uh, people like uh, Pom Berry, Made You Look, and Nina Benina Brown have done um, Venom by this body paint with this big mouth, so I'm working off those techniques to try to draw the big Audrey 2 mouth here. Okay, as I said, I've been practicing my Audrey 2s, and I have a reference picture here. So Audrey 2, the puppet, created by the Jim Henson Company is iconic, so I'm going to try to get the colours right as possible. Nice red lips, very drag, very purple mouth inside, reminiscent of like a Venus flytrap. And he's got these teeth, these yellow teeth that are in a couple of rows, okay, like a shark. Okay, so let's just try to sketch this out in my face first. I'm going to use my upper lip as the regular lip and just extend it, okay, and he's got wavy. Venom's mouth is a bit more V. Audrey 2's is going to be a bit more wide, okay? Thank goodness I have a thick neck. Goes all the way down the side. Lower lip. Who else loves Little Shop of Horrors? I remember watching it as a kid. I'd watch it over and over again. One of those movies, you know, like Dolls. Um, and the music was just so catchy. I really liked it. Skid Row is one of my favourite songs to sing along to. And of course, Somewhere That's Green and um, Suddenly Seymour. <laughs> so many. Uh, I, I really, really love the musical. It was campy and gory and funny and it was just so well done. I think it was the perfect movie musical. They're thinking of remaking it, which I'm not sure whether I want to see it. I think the puppet really makes a big difference. I think a CG Audrey 2 is not going to be as good. Okay, the tongue. So their Venom tongues are like, you know, coming out like that. But Audrey 2 doesn't have a tongue like that. Audrey 2's tongue is something that sticks out. So I want to... And it's quite... It looks like a leaf. Okay, and Audrey 2's tongue, it has wavy sides, it's like leaf. I've been studying the plant. See, I've been drawing and drawing and drawing and trying to make the leaves look right too. So hopefully this goes well. The teeth are very broad based and yellow. Some of it even have like double teeth like that. So, so Little Shop of Horrors was actually based on a movie that was made in 1960 by Roger Corman. Okay, it was a dark black and white movie with um, horror comedy tropes and Jack Nicholson was actually in it. Jack Nicholson actually played the dentist's patient in that very first movie, a very young Jack Nicholson. It was a cult classic until 1982 when Alan Menken and Howard Ashman musicalized it for off-Broadway. Okay, the teeth are spaced out. Spa there's actually quite a lot of space in between the teeth. This was actually the second time Alan Menken and Howard Ashman collaborated. Their very first collaboration, God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater. Didn't do very well, didn't get very good reviews, but they pushed on and did this new musical. It was kind of a rock and roll musical with a lot of Motown themes. With this Greek chorus of a black girl group, reminiscent of the Motown girl groups, and they were called Crystal, Ronette and Chiffon, named after the crystals, the Ronettes and the Chiffons. <laughs> very campy references. I'm gonna black out some of this. Okay, to make it look like the stock is growing up there. Okay, my dress is coming up here, so I think there'll be some leaves here. He's got these variegated leaves. Okay, and off Broadway, Little Shop of Horrors was actually the third longest running movie musical off Broadway. Really, really popular. Okay, so that's a rough shape. A little bit messy here, but we'll try to. Hope it looks okay later. See, put this up, the mouth gets a little bit bigger. Okay, let's get these face tapes on. Okay, so I'm just going to go in with the gums first. Okay, I'm going to do this in parts. I'm going to work on the mouth first, and then 
the face and then the body. Okay, so we're going to try to draw this now. I'm going to be using my Neron Paradise paints. I'm going to use a lighter pink this time. Actually, Audrey 2's gums are purple, so I'm going to use a darker purple first just to sketch out this. The edge of the mouth. So the Off-Broadway musical did so well that it became a movie. They decided to make a movie and Frank Oz directed it with Rick Moranis as Seymour and Ellen Green as Audrey. And they got um, Levi Stubbs to voice Audrey 2. And I think that's why Audrey 2 was designed to look like an African-American singer with these big huge lips. And of course Frank Oz was a longtime collaborator of Jim Henson so that's why the puppetry was so top-notch. And now the lighter violet, makes it a little bit of pink. I'm going to outline the teeth, the gums, the top of the teeth. And of course, there are a lot of other guest stars at the time also. So um, a lot of guest stars from like Saturday Night Live, like John Candy, Christopher Guest, um, Steve Martin as the dentist. So they were all these comedians giving top-notch performances. Use the pink to outline the tongue. Keep that wavy tongue. Okay, the edges of the tongue are pink, but it turns purplish in the middle. Just adding colors first. Okay, so going back in with the purple. Okay, I'm going to clean it up later. Now I'm going to draw in the teeth. Okay, so the teeth are a little bit gross and yellowed. I'm going to fill it in with yellow first, okay, to outline the teeth. The yellow in the paradise paints. The shape doesn't have to be too accurate now because we're going to be cleaning it up with black later. Try not to mix too much into the purple. So the character design of Audrey 2 is very, very cartoony. I love these colours. Green, purple, yellow, pink. You get the idea. So I'm just going to finish all that up and I'll be right back. Okay, I've coloured in all the teeth yellow and uh, I'm going to lighten them up later. Now I'm just going to go in between and define the rest of the mouth with some dark brown. I'm just going to colour everything in and outline all the teeth. So today's look, I think you probably saw in the thumbnail already, I have a very iconic wig start by my friend Salome Black. I really wanted this look to be a kind of an Audrey meets Audrey 2 look and he did a very good job of the wig. So Ellen Green played Audrey, both in the off-Broadway production and in the movie musical. She had such an iconic look, voice and hair that really made Audrey such a sympathetic character. She's got this squeaky voice and a very sincere, very earnest way that she played her. And that's what I see in everyone's portrayal of Audrey ever since then. In all the Broadway and off-Broadway revivals, people kind of like have this squeaky sound, okay, that um, Ellen Green started. Other than Audrey, Ellen Green didn't have that many um, iconic roles. I mean, she did. What, she was in Pushing Daisies with Christian Chenoweth for a while. That was a really fun show, but it didn't last very long. I remember that show introduced me to They Might Be Giants. One big difference about the character, about Audrey's character in the movie, is that she doesn't die. In the original movie, 1960 movie, and in the musical, the original musical, she actually dies and um, her iconic song Somewhere That's Green that she originally sings is an I Want song which she says about how she wants to live somewhere that's green, like a picket fence life. Uh, she does a reprise, it's a very shocking reprise and the first time I saw it I was shocked because she sings this reprise and basically the somewhere that's green refers to the plant and Seymour feeds her to the plant. She sacrifices herself so he can have success. Because basically the plant was a stand-in for commodity fetishism. That as the plant grew, Seymour was getting famous and making money. He was feeding people to the plant in order to gain fame and fortune. So she sacrificed herself for him. They actually took that out of the movie musical because it didn't test well with audiences. They needed a happy ending. And so she lives in the musical. Okay, I'm just going to finish up this brown and then I'm going to go over it again with purple. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, added some details, some purple inside. Now I'm going to go around the teeth with um, some of this blue, okay, just to make it look like it's a bit highlighted. So this baby blue. So um, Audrey dying wasn't the only thing that changed. For the movie, the, the 1986 movie musical, they actually 
changed the ending completely. In the, in the original story, after he sacrifices Audrey, Seymour actually jumps into the plant to try to kill the plant and dies. The plant eats him. And then after that, the plant manages to get everyone to buy little clippings of him. And that's how he takes over the world. So the last few minutes of the, of the musical is actually these rampaging Audrey 2s destroying the world. It was a feat of puppetry and animatronics and visual effects. It was so cool. But um, it didn't test well with audiences. Audiences hated it and they had to change the ending to a happy ending where Seymour and Audrey run off to, the, to their picket fans' home and leave a little ambiguous ending with a little baby Audrey 2 in the garden. And that was the, the only ending I knew for a very long time. When I started seeing amateur productions of the original musical, I was like, oh, is this how it ends? Uh, you see, so the blue just highlights the base of the teeth. Gives it a bit of this prominent wet look. Okay, now I'm going in with the white. I'm going to sharpen up all the teeth and blend it into the other. And refine the shape of the teeth. So these messy bits here, you can try to refine with the white. So I'm just going to finish off those teeth and I'll be right back. Okay, I've sharpened up all the teeth and I'm going in with the white also and I'm going to just draw in some reflections on the gums. Some squiggly lines all the way around this part of it. And then the tongue as well. Okay, let's go into the lips. I'm gonna leave the center here, so I'm gonna use actual red lipstick for this. I'm just gonna outline the mouth now with a, this kind of a light orange. Mix in the white and orange. Nice juicy lips for you too. So I actually think there's talks for a remake of Little Shop of Horrors. Apparently, Billy Porter is supposed to play um, Audrey 2. I'm gonna shade that in later. Now I'm ready to do the face. Okay, now the second part, I'm gonna do the face. I'm gonna do green to yellow. I'm gonna start with the lighter green in the pastel, in the pastel palette, and we can darken it up with powders later too light, so I will go in with the darker one. Taking a lot of troll not to burst into song. <laughs> and into yellow. Just gonna use the same brush. Into the green. I'm gonna be using a mix of my Neron. Just grab some yellow, just to blend this out. Okay. So this is the highlight. So far it's all going according to plan. Let's powder that. As I'm going to go into the shadows, I just want to set all this so there's a smooth base for the shadows to go on. <coughs> I'm going to try using my kimchi chic in the Virgin Mojito palette. I'm going in a sour pot. This green just to set this. Give back some color. Bring back some color. From the Stacy Marie palette, contour a little bit. You can a little bit of black. I want to give my head this rounded shape so that this part comes out more, and this part goes back. I know this will be bang, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Now I'm going to draw in the veins on Audrey 2's face. I'm going to use I'm using the purple first. Waste it. The vein that goes down the middle. I'm trying to go around the ridges in my face to make them look straight and they look straight on. Okay, so my brow comes out here, so I'm curving it in there a little bit. As it comes towards here, it turns green. So I'm going to be using um, the height. Bring it down towards the front. I'm using Nuke and a bit of the height. It's going to go across a little bit. 
So I've got my nice veins I've got across. And with a fluffy brush, I'm just going to blend all that out. Okay, I'm just going to blend all that out, do a little bit of shading, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone and drawn this grid of veins on my face and I've highlighted it a little bit. I'm going to go in now with my Suva Beauty. Um, I've got a whole bunch of Suva Beauties. I'm going to use my yellow, red and green to draw little veins on the face. Okay, so I need the yellow dance party. I think Little Shop of Horrors, the music is so catchy and fun that it's really kept alive with amateur production. So I've seen actually several um, done by colleges when I was in the UK. Uh, it was revived recently in John Groff, Groff on Encores. I didn't catch that one, but I saw some bootlegs. And of course in the West End, Vicky Vox, the drag queen, actually plays Aubrey too. She has this really nice, um, rich voice. Almost like Levi Stubbs. Even before Vicky Vox did it, I was actually dreaming of doing it in drag. <laughs> and this is, I guess, the way I'm doing it. Doing Audrey and Audrey 2. Take a rest from it now. Okay, I'm going to, now for the third part, I'm going to do my chest. I'm just going to draw, colour in all these leaves. I'm going to use a mixture of the different greens in the mirror. And also I have my MAC Chroma Cake, just in case. Okay, so I'm just outlining this with the green and drawing in these fronds. Not the best at face painting. Hopefully I can redo this look in a few years time and make it even better. This face painting and body painting is a real different art. I'm just going to fill that in with different shades of green first and then I'll go in and add some dimension later on. Different greens here. Or these two are just very variegated leaves. And then they have little red tips. So, the LGBT aspect of Bill Shop. I have to talk about Howard Ashman. Okay, Howard Ashman was a lyricist, and he was a gay. Uh, he was a gay. <laughs> he was a. Uh, he was gay, and he was a uh, struggling with being gay in the late 70s and 80s. Okay, at the time it was pre-AIDS New York City. Okay, and it was quite debaucherous. I mean, at the time, young gay men coming out. That was uh, after the summer of love, you know, and they were having a lot of sex, having a lot of group sex, and he was pressured into having a lot of group sex, and he actually caught HIV. He actually lived with HIV for a very long time, and you know, for Americans, wholesome Americans who were brought up in that era, they were still subscribing to a lot of heteronormative ideals. And I think that's where the song Somewhere That's Green is so important, because it's the song where Audrey dreams about running off with Seymour and um, singing about somewhere that's green, picket fences, a washer and a dryer and an ironing machine. He, he had this very idealised outlook on life. Although the lyrics were very funny, it wasn't really played for laughs, right? It was quite earnest. You don't really laugh when she's singing that song. It's just so earnest and Alan Green does such an amazing job portraying Audrey that you really fall in love with her. Okay. Somewhere That's Green is a quintessential I Want song. So in musical theatre, um, the heroine, usually the girl, usually the leading actress, sings, sings a ballad around the second or third song, and it's called the I Want song, and, and tells the audience what she really wants and gets her on the side. Ellen Menken and Howard Ashman went on to write a lot of songs for Disney musicals, most famously, The Little Mermaid, and the I Want song in that movie, Part of Your World, sounds a lot like Somewhere That's Green. And in the Book of Mormon, they parodied both Somewhere That's Green and Part of Your World by singing the song Satle Kasiti <laughs> about an African girl who's dreaming of going to Salt Lake City because that's where the Mormons come from. And you can tell the chord progression and the, and the melody are very, very similar. Okay, And also, because of his gay sensibility, he writes the most beautiful love songs. Like Suddenly Seymour is such a different love song from different musical theatre love songs of that era. Instead of how beautiful and how how much she, he loves her, Seymour sings about understanding, sweet understanding, okay? That he, he's accepting her and loving her for who she is. Because she's the whole life she's been told she's been useless and worthless, even with um, the dentist who treats her so badly. And I think this is what a lot of gay people, a lot of trans people can identify with. Okay, almost done. Yeah, so Howard Ashman, he died um, and there was this tribute to him. All the songs, all the Disney songs that we all love so well, all written by Howard Ashman. He also wrote the music, he also wrote the lyrics of Beauty and the Beast. Well, they said that um, the gay subtext, okay, between Gaston and LeFou in the live action remake was actually a tribute to Howard Ashman. 
But you know, it was still so half-hearted. The way that Disney pussyfoots around and queer baits the audience is really disgusting. We should just come out and have a proper LGBT character for once. And so this pussyfooting around it. Whew. Okay, so I brought this down a bit more. Going to my final bit, the lips. Okay, a nice red lip. Goes all the way into. Blends into that. So now I'm gonna paint my hands green, put on my outfit, and I'll be back with the finished look. So this is the finished look. Audrey 2 meets Audrey, taking a summon X, waiting for Seymour to come home. <laughs> and I'm finally somewhere that's green. Okay, so thank you again to Salome Black for getting this wig done in such short notice a minute I got a inspiration for this look. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for post notifications. This week I am cramming in three looks for the last week of October for Snatchween, so tune in again on Friday when I have a very special guest on my episode. So don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for post notifications. Alright, I'll see you next time. Bye! Feed me! Don't forget to catch my other videos. I did a dolls video and an Uzumaki spiral. Bye. Oh, Audrey, you look so different. Is that new eye makeup? <laughs>